going to the cross, and he died before he went to the cross, rather, he said that he was coming back. That he's going to die on the cross and be buried for three days. And then he said, after three days, I'll rise again. That's what he said. I was able to go to the tomb where they say they buried him. I went into the tomb, but I didn't see his body nowhere. I believe he did rise. After his resurrection, he stood on Mount Island and gave the commission to the church, gave the charge to the church that I'm coming back. Now, the same Jesus that, that died before he, first of all, the same Jesus that was born, the Messiah, he would prophesy that he was coming. And he also said that he's coming back even though he's gone back to his father now. He's coming back. I mean, looking for him. Now, my job is to let you tell you so you can look for him. It'll remind you that Jesus is coming back. So you can get, get prepared that when he show up, you'll be ready. He said, I'm coming, I'm coming as a thief and a robber by night. No man know the day, not the hour, when I shall return. So what that mean? That means you got to be ready at all times. Do y'all try do y'all understand what I'm trying to say? I may not be saying it like you want me to say, but I'm trying to tell you, because it's on my heart. That you you've got to get ready to meet him. Amen, because when you're dead, you're done. You ain't getting up from there. Unless you've been born again, that will be a divine transformation. You will be transformed. You will pull off old mortal and put on immortality. You'll pull off the celestial and put on the terrestrial. Throw out the terrestrial and put on the celestial. When Jesus comes. But you got to make preparation. All I'm trying to tell you, you got to make preparation. And in the midst of making preparation, you're going to be tried in this world. You got to go through something. And if you can't stand the test, you won't be able to make it into glory. If you flunk the test here, if you can't love one another, that's, that's one of the greatest tests. If you can't love one another, walk in, just get your little group. A whole lot of y'all got group. You don't cater to nobody but your little group. You got your group. You don't cater to nobody. We 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 got our we our but we got our thing. Yeah, you sure do. Your thing gonna take you to hell. You got to love everybody. That that person that that being overlooked. You need to go to them. So many people say they have the love of God in their heart. And I don't see it. Y'all, why y'all sitting so quiet? Am I that dumb? I don't feel nothing coming from y'all. Hello, somebody. If you, if, if you think I'm lying, y'all get up here where I'm at. And, and look at it, look across this audience and start talking. <laughs> but you got to get ready to meet Jesus. You know what? <laughs> and this may be sometime last, some of y'all going to hear my voice. Not because God's going to stop me, but he's going to stop some of you. This ain't no plaything. People are leaving here. And you are people. And the reason why you're supposed to be coming here is to get ready to meet Jesus. How many of you getting ready to meet him? How many coming here to meet get ready to meet Jesus? You might know, you might know the word of God, you might know it better than I do, but it ain't about that you knowing him. I had a sergeant in the armed forces. He always wanted to hang around me. I was 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20 what? <laughs> I was 23 years old. And um, his name was Sergeant Edwin. He was in, had been in the military since before World War II broke out. He was in the war, World War II, and he was in the Korean War. And, uh, but he always wanted to hang around me, a little old young preacher. I didn't tell nobody I was a preacher but they found out. And, 
and I was cleared for a confidential secret. That means I worked in the radar division and so forth and so on, and everybody couldn't come in there. But because he had been in the military so long, he could come where I was. He always wanted to hang around me for whatever reason. Maybe I looked good to him. I don't know. I got my picture in the office there and I'll show you how I looked back in that time. But he always wanted to hang around me. And he said to me, and we talked about the law when he hung around me. We talked about the word of God. We just didn't talk. We talked about the word of God. He said, Rev, I know the Bible. Now, I want you to hear this. He said, Rev, I know the Bible. He said, but I'm not a Christian. Y'all catch that? I know the Bible, but I'm not a Christian. A whole lot of people know the Bible, but they ain't no Christian. A whole lot of people talk the Bible, but they ain't no Christian. You got to be born again on the inside. And it would manifest itself on the outside. You must be. You got to be born again. Job was being tried. He said, the Lord know the way that I take. And when I've been tried, I should come out as gold. That means when I've been tested. Tested and tried. Some of you can't even stand. Nobody talk about you. I guess you said, this ain't no sermon, but I'm talking to you all. Uh -huh. Can't say, well, they talking about him. So what? Yeah. They talk about Jesus. Yeah. Who are you that they can't talk about? Yeah. They lied on Jesus. They cursed, cursed him out. Yeah. Slapped him, fit in his face. Who are you yeah. that somebody can't talk about you? Go, don't talk about me. Go, if you have a good time talking about me, go, don't talk about me. Yeah. If it make you happy yeah. to talk about me, go ahead. Huh? The old people, I'm old now. The old people, you say, you can talk about me as much as you please. But the more you talk, I'm going to bend my knee. That means I'm going to go down in prayer. And I'm going to tell God, I ain't going to get mad with you. I'm just going to tell Oh, good God of mine. I'm just going to tell God all about you. Tell him to fix your heart. I'm not going to tell him to kill you. But Lord, his heart needs to be fixed. You're supposed to come here on Sunday morning to worship him, to praise his name for because of who he is and what he is. Because the devil going to try you. Jesus said these words. He said the devil is a deceiver. What that mean? He leads you down a path that he know ain't right. Tell you things that he know ain't right. Lead you the wrong path. Something that sound good to you. And you go out after. Y'all understand what I'm trying to say? He tell you that so that you can follow him. Jesus says, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that lead into life eternal and there be few that find it there. They ain't looking for no narrow path. But he said, broad is the gate and broad is the way that lead to destruction and there be many that go there right. I know everybody want to crowd. They because, because of the fact we don't let everything go on here. But if we let the gate down. You understand what I'm saying? Now this is the word. Jesus is straight at the gate. Now what do you mean by that? That means you can't do everything. Straight at the gate and narrow the way. That means you got to walk the straight and narrow path. That leads, that if you want eternal life. Now I'm going to tell you this because some of you might have got the wrong idea. It said religion was never designed to make one pleasure less. It wasn't designed to make you sad, right. but glad, happy. Yes, I still can have joy. Yes, Amen. Even though I'm a child of God, I still have joy. Yes, I can travel. I can do anything the Lord let me do. Yes, anything. Paul, the apostle Paul said, all things are lawful for me, but not expedient. Yes, that means whatever is right for you is right for me. Yes, but it ain't helpful. It's not helpful all the time. It may be right, but it not be helpful for me to do it. Because you know why? Because you you that excuse. Well, I really want to do doing such a thing. It's all right for me to do it because you're doing it. It, 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 it. Paul said, love for me, but not expedient. The apostle Paul said this, what I'm trying to explain to you now. He said, if you eat meat 
and the meat hurts your brother, don't eat, that means deny yourself. It's all right for you to eat it. But because he's going to use that as an excuse, don't eat that meat. And you're, you're denying yourself in order to help that individual. I could have my stomach full, but I have to deny myself because of what you try to help save you. I got I to gotta go hungry trying to help you. Y'all understand what I'm trying to tell you? Y'all tired of me talking now? I'm preaching. John the Baptist said, oh, 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 all you vipers who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come. I, that's all I'm trying to do to warn you because it's coming. And who shall be able to stand? Song said, Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. But who? That's a question. Who shall be able to stand? I know everyone says, I'm, I'm, I'm saved, I'm ready, I'm a Christian. But when that judgment day comes, it's going to tell the story. I ain't got to worry about who saved, mama, dad, sister, brother, friend, loved one. Testing day will tell who's saved, who's not saved. When Jesus, who shall? That awful day will surely come. The appointed hour, I make haste. Then said, Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. And who shall be able to stand? I guess that's enough for y'all, huh? And who shall be able to stand? Take a good look at yourself. Now, you can forget about me if you want, but you got to love me. Ain't nobody in here going to go to heaven without loving me. I'm going to tell you right now. Ain't none of y'all going to go to heaven without loving me. If you think you can, go ahead. He ain't going to make it. <laughs> you're going to have to love this little black man. You're going to have to love me. And I ain't going to make you love me either. It be, it, it, because if you don't have love of God in your heart, I, I, I know you ain't going to love me. And I can look at some of you, and I'm going to leave that alone. <laughs> but, but it is serious. It, it, it's the important thing. I hear these renowned uh, pastors and preachers on radio and television. They reach people all over the world. But nobody really telling people to get ready to meet Jesus that he's coming back again. And Jesus said when he's coming back, when he come back, he's going to come back in a cloud. Yeah. Just like he went away. He said when he shall begin to descend from heaven, he says every eye is going to see him. That means all of you that's in here today, whether you're dead or alive, you're going to look up and see him. When he descends from heaven on a cloud. Every eye. And if you're not right, you ain't gonna want to see him. It, it, suppose he come back right now. Suppose, it, suppose it, you know what? It, 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 in this, 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 this building, the top, you, it, 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 it'd be clear. You'll be able to see through this building. If you're in a submarine in the depth of the sea, you'll be able to look up and see Jesus. Be, why I say, why, why you say it? Because he said, every eye gonna see me. That means you can't, can't hide. Somebody say they're going to cry out, rocks and mountains fall on us, hide our faith from, from him that's sitting on the throne. But, but ain't nothing going to be able to hide you from Jesus when he come back. Yeah. And all I'm trying to do is try to tell you, get ready quick. Cut all this old funny stuff out. Cut all this old falsehood out. Yeah. Trying to satisfy mankind. Yeah. Paul said, don't pattern your, don't, don't be conformed to this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Yeah. The reason why they first started calling them Christian was that Antioch. 